So when it comes to streamer fishing on um, small streams, any any water actually, you're looking for three things. So they need a hidey hole, so a safe place, undercut bank, tree roots, etc. Food, massively important, they need food to survive and get big. But also, they're looking for oxygen, so deep pools, winter, fast runs in the summer. This particular pool, I've muddied up the water on the inside line. That's what I'm just passing to. And that muddy water kind of hides me going down as a fish for the trout. And all I'm doing is I'm grabbing a fly, trees all around me, and I'm going all the past them into the far bank where the cover is. So this is the safe place underneath the trees on the left hand side of the screen. Going all the past right in there. Safe place in there, you see. Undercut banking, tree roots. I'm for them to hide and get away from predators. And all I'll do is I'll have a, a bow and arrow cast, a work the rod, creating some movement in the fly. Typical to see your typical. Quite hard to film the new so Just bow and arrow cast, and far banking. Always give the fly time to settle. And keep an eye on the indicator and it can often bury a bit. Just work the rod in tiny little three inch motions back upstream just to give that fly a little bit of movement. And typically when I got around the corner there, um, I had this little beauty. Absolutely immaculate fish. But yeah, off camera sadly. So the flies that I tend to use uh, small this is a little jig bugger, and I use that for clear water. Um, it's just such a nice fly, unobtrusive. It's also very good for catching coarse fish. All black, a little bit of red. The others are Martin's minnow, tungsten bead. But you've also got that key trigger there with the eyes. I like this fly, and I catch fish on it. However, this one, this is called a clark. It's one of my flies, it's just hairs here. A little bit dub and loop color, black marabou and some silver in the tail. For the heavy hitting stuff, I use this, it's called a bacon snack. And as you can see, it's a, a really lumpy mouthful. And I've got a load of lead under the body on the, the front hook, and you've got the trigger with the, the beads there, but you notice I've got a little stinger there. And when I do go streamer fishing, I tend to have my streamer set up. I didn't shorten my, my leader for the indicator to the fly, so I have them all set up. So this fish, Fell for a clark, that black hole. Then just cast into the floor and jig back. Keeping it, you can actually keep the fly in one place, believe it or not. And the fish will still come out from the snags on the sides and take it. Same fish, different side, getting back in the water. But one of the issues you've got when you're fishing um, in this kind of <laughs> terrain is you've got this it's proper jungle. Um, so you can't be scared of breaking stuff. I've done so many rods because of all the junk and everything I've got to get through. But you can see here, this particular area, perfect, fast water, and I've got a big build up of trees there, branches. And I actually caught this fish for there before I'd set up the camera. So thinking that I could maybe get another one, I've came back uh, and set the camera up, and the plan is to work my way back down Again, colouring up the water, it sort of hides the fact that I'm there and I'm walking my way down to that big pile of foam and scum um, on the right hand side of the picture. So that's a log jam. You can see all the water in there, loads of oxygen, perfect for trout. Um, this is June, so we're, they're looking for oxygen. We just had a heat wave, so this kind of water is fast running different way, a lot of pore here. Um, it's perfect. So you've got a safe place and then you've got that tree roots and the scum line. You've also got oxygen, so great for fishing. And all I'm doing is flicking it down so my bow and arrow pass, hold it in the current, and then I'll just jig the rod three inches at a time, keeping an eye on my indicator for taking the fish. Bow and arrow pass, full stretch, that's where the 10 foot three there really helps. Again, all this mooks and pans there. 
arm dude just chipping that, giving the fly some movement. Typically, <laughs> after I'd had one. And then when I came back upstream, I put the camera away, jigged it again, unbelievably caught another again on the clock. So this area, this has got a lot of cover. Watch when I walk in the bank, it'll move. All this is undercut. See it moving? All undercut, about two foot off the edge of the river. And there's loads of food in this crayfish. Tends to get the main food item. Big long pool. And all I'm doing is working it along the edge there. Little chub. He went back. So I'll show you how I set it up. I've got two road lengths here, point to the old nylon. This has got a very little stretch. That's what I want. All the stretch has got to be in my tippet. Um, I then have a clear section of my foot. This is point two oh. And I just blood that, blood knot that to the, the nylon. And then I blood knot my indicator, again point two oh. A bit of foot of the stuff to that bit of nylon. On the end of that, a uh, tippet ring. This is for quick changing. Like I say, I have my flies already set up. So a tippet ring on there. And this is the, the reel. So I reel a nice large arbor because it's an island, you know, when it kinked up and stuff. So the larger the arbor, um, the better, the bigger the diameter. There's my indicator into the nylon. I pull the nylon. I come into the, the yellow nylon, the point for it. And all that is, is every section is blood knotted to the next. So it's a nice, sorry, not blood knotted, barrel knotted. It's nice, neat, and tidy. We've got a bit of yard to clear an island there. Then the indicator. And at the end of the indicator, I took it. So if you watch my, I'm going to fish this. I'm, I'm, I'm presenting my fly along the edge of the snag. Like you can see, this bank's undercut. It's undercut by about two feet. And I've been stupidly slow to tell us. Spook coarse fish. And if you watch my indicator on my right hand, I'm only moving the rod a tiny amount, three inches, four inches, if that. But my indicator stops. Every time I jig, it drops back down. Jig up, drops down, jig up, drops down, jig up, drops down. Or right, if you watch, I start working it back as close to the snag as possible, it jigs up, but it doesn't fall down. That's a fish. Jig, jig, jig. Now should we see the indicator? Big up. Now go loose. And go loose that time around tight. A fish is shot out. Um, it's not a big fish. Well, I actually see it's not a big fish. It's a big fish from a few this size. Um, but it's shot out from under cut bank. What I will say is, I was walking up here, in the shallow water at the bottom, a fish came out of the pool. Round the tree at the bottom, in my camera, and shot her back and the pool spooked. Good three pound plus. This is a lovely fish, and a nice soft wood like that, 10 foot three wood. And again, fell to the clark, the black streamer, my favourite by a mile. Stunning little fish. Fabulous hooks, and hooked them, get them back in the water quick with wet hands. So this bit, this is one of my prime pools. You can see what I have to put up there. You've seen earlier of the, the trees, but well, this is nettles up to the neck. So in here I've got safe place, massive big snag at the bottom of the pool. The head of the pool, I've got a big run of oxygen. I kind of film all this because of the nettles, sadly. And loads of food in the shape of coarse fish and crayfish. And this is what you get. Big fish. And bear in mind this stream is going to be seven or eight feet across. Again on the flat, that's the kind of fish that you can get. Streamer fishing, small streams, devastating. <laughs> Unbelievably good. I hope you give it a try um, and I hope you got a lot of success because it's phenomenal.